Welcome back to Fixin' a Ride, everybody. You guessed it, we're on part number three of the 03 Arctic Cat Pantera 550 Luxury Touring Edition. Electric start and reverse, two up, repair. So we're trying to get this thing rocking. Gonna get ready to put the bottom end together. I got a new top end gasket kit. Cylinders are all powdered up. Heads are all powdered up. Everything's ready to go. I got brand new nuts and bolts going on, man. Oh man, things gonna look good. So I got a top end gasket kit, crank seals. I got a new oil pump. Being that the old one was leaking because it was cracked, the tab, the mounting tab on it was cracked. So we're gonna get that rocking. The only thing left, I'll, once I get the engine completely put together, which is the cylinders and everything, the only thing I'll have to do once I install that is I'll have to get the driven clutch off. And I'm not sure how that's gonna go because I've already removed the bolt on it, and it seems like it doesn't want to it doesn't want to budge at this point. We'll cross that road when we get to it. But if you guys are wondering where I got this hoodie from, I got it from West Michigan Snowmobile. They have hoodies, they got t-shirts, they got stickers. So contact them. You can go online, West Michigan Snowmobile Parts LLC on Facebook. Contact Keith or Eric Loudermilk and they'll hook you guys up with that stuff as well as all kinds of snowmobile used parts. They have nothing but good stuff. If you're wondering where I got this beanie from, you can go on Facebook and go to the Arctic Cat Trail Riders group. Contact Mike Miller. He's got beanies. And he's also got shirts. I'm sure you guys have seen the shirt that I've had on. It says Arctic Cat Trail Riders, except for it's in orange. I'm not sure if he's got different colors. He might have different colors. So contact them if you guys want to get some of that stuff. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Let me come on back, check out what we got going on. Don't forget to smash the like button. Always appreciate that. And to go ahead and check us out on TikTok and we're on Instagram. So just to give you guys a rundown of the process real quick, the first thing I got to do is put the oil seal in for the coolant pump shaft. And then I put the mechanical seal on. I got to pound that in. There's a ceramic race that goes back on the pump impeller. And then there is a new sealing washer that goes on the bolt that holds the pump impeller on. So once I do that, I'll be able to put the crank in and then we'll seal up the cases. We'll put the end plate on, we'll put the stator in, we'll put the motor mounts on and then we'll put the oil pump on and that'll button up the bottom end and then the next video we'll go ahead and put the cylinders on, cylinders on and go from there so all right let's go ahead and get into it all right so i got everything cleaned up and set out uh got a good used crank this was off of a 95 zr 580 and um it had the speedometer had just under 4,000 miles on it the guy was kind enough to send me some video of the bearings spinning and everything they're good to go the wrist pin bearings are good to go as well that's actually off of this one so um, i ended up cleaning up the pistons also they were pretty dirty Cleaned everything up, just went through everything, uh, cleaned up all the motor mounts, got a gasket kit for it. We're looking at a Vertex top end gasket kit. I'm not too positive about these cylinder base gaskets, but this was what was available for the time crunch. I got some new hardware for the cylinders, just some basic nuts and bolts, nothing crazy. Got the water pump rebuild kit as well, that's what's going to go in first. Got a new stator for it, new used stator. I got this from a buddy of mine. Let's see. Yeah, I went and just like you guys saw, I went and powder coated the cylinders and the heads, as well as the thermostat housing and coolant port. One of the more recent things I did was went through the primary clutch, and this thing was just dirty, you guys. It was like brown. <laughs> but it turned out pretty good. I just uh, pulled it all apart, slapped it in the blast cabinet. Yeah thing is looking really nice so uh should be good to go everything else uh pretty much checked out on it uh, the only thing that was kind of jacked up were the old weights so i got some new weights here some new pins i got uh the bushings are fine in these i got some spacers coming as well and then that'll put that back together and then i'll be able to be able to pull apart the secondary clutch and the driven clutch so all right, so we're getting ready to install the oil seal first. What you wanna do is just plop it on down in there. I use a 9 16 and then just tap it in. You can tell I use this one a lot. <laughs> All right, so once you get that in there and you've cleaned up your, your ring clip, you wanna get yourself a pair of Ring clip pliers. Just plop it on down in there like that. And the next step is to get the mechanical seal 
And I like to use a 7 8 12 point. Unless you have, you know, the exact, you know, if you got yourself a an exact uh, piece of pipe that will fit that. Just like that. Then you're ready to put the shaft in. I already uh, cleaned up the shaft pretty good. So that's going to go in. And you want to make sure that you have your washer on there. or your, It's actually a bushing is what it is. But you'll want to put a little bit of... Uh, so I have a special... I use AMSOIL. I like this stuff. Water. Water resistant grease. Synthetic. It's good down to like minus 40 degrees or something. But this is one that I only use if I need specially clean grease. That's just how I am. <laughs> so you just want to fill those lips in there. And then it's going to go ahead and put some on this shaft here. I've already cleaned it up. And you want to typically want to polish this up like you start off like 400 grit and then I'll put it like I'll put a couple pieces of wood around this clamp and a vise and then just like polish it like shoe shine it. I'll do both sides all the way around and then I'll hit it with six like 600 and then I'll hit it with 2000. And then that makes sure that this area where the seal rides doesn't have any burrs or it's not rough to where it wears it out. So um, it doesn't hurt to just coat this whole thing. I mean, obviously, if it's got a little bit of pitting, too, you know, leave that in there. It's not going to hurt nothing. So it's just going to sit on there. And then you want to make sure that you cover the area that the seal's going to be riding on. There we go. So I popped the old ceramic race out, put this new one in there. And the last little step is you just want to coat this real. Nothing crazy, just enough. You want to coat the whole thing. Get that on there. Just like that. And that gets slipped on. You'll want to hold the shaft on the bottom here. Push that on like that. And now the last key here is to use this new seal. And it goes over the shaft. You want your washer on there first. And then just coat this shaft a little bit. And you don't want to just cram this thing on there because it's a sealing service. So you want to start it. This obviously goes out. These two ribs goes towards the impeller. Just get it on there and twist it. Because if you push it on there and just cram it on, it'll be scraping across the threads. You don't want to do that. All right, just like that. And this gets torqued to four and a half foot pounds, but for now I'm just gonna put it in there. You wanna use, you wanna use blue Loctite. This is a 10 millimeter cap bolt. And there is a way that you can torque this thing like this. If you take a screwdriver, you can pin the gears. Let me show you. Some people might not think this is a good idea. But right in there. It would be a good idea to slip the uh, other housing on. And it's not a lot, so you just pin that thing in there. There you go. Just like that. So that's done. Then you can put a little bit of two-stroke oil down in this hole, which is the lubricating passage. Make sure you're good there. Everything moves fine. A little bit of oil on here. That lubes the shaft while it's inside there. So we're going to put the crank in next. So I'm going to get that set up. All right, so this is the top half of the crank case. You want to put your ring in, your retainer ring in first. You want to make sure that's in there. There are locating pins for the bearings. These all have their own spot. You can use grease or oil to hold them in. It's not really even that big of a deal, to be honest.
Don't cram it in your oil, your these oil holes here. All right, like that. Next, you will want to get out your new crank seals. Technically, you can go ahead and just slap the crank in there. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, you could have caught on already that you want your case up on a couple of two by fours. Getting a little ahead of myself here. You want to make sure that these rings right here are up and down, but they're opposite of each other. These are the chamber compression rings. So you put one up and one down. And then you have your locating dimples or bores for the bearings. And then 180 degrees from that are the little punch marks to tell you that your, your bore for your locating pin is directly over the pin. But what we're gonna do first is we're going to get these seals on here. For that, I'm going to use grease. And you just want to make sure they're clean on the inside if you've had them out of the package before already. I've been told I put too much grease inside these lips, but whatever. Little extra ain't gonna hurt nothing. It's better than not enough, right? All right, so there's one, and this is for this side. And then you can even take a little extra, just make sure that you get it right over here on this edge, because that will allow the crank to slip into the bore easily. All right. All right, so I stopped the video there because I was trying to put the crank in and I was using this seal, okay? This is this seal is 74 five millimeters outer diameter, uh, 29 inner, and then like 10 wide, basically. Well, I got a Comatic Gasket crank seal kit, and it's the C1, uh, C1025CS crank seals, Comatic, okay? And uh, it's got the 75, oh, 75 by 28 by nine, okay? Well, it's got the right, the correct PTO side seal, but, this 28 by 75 by nine is not right. It's supposed to be 72 outer diameter, which uh, it should be like 29, 72 by 10 instead. Well, I found another one of my kits that I had an extra of, which is the C1024 CS. And that comes with the same 3864 by eight oil seal for the PTO end. But for the magneto end, it's 297210. The issue is that it says uh, 98 to 03 ZR600 powder special. Well, if, if you look up the 2003 Pantera 550, the crank seal is supposed to be the same for on this mag cylinder and the PTO end. So it's supposed to be the same set of seals. So I'm not sure if Kometic got this wrong. I am assuming they got it wrong because that's not right. Because I even looked up just the ZR Powder Special and 9803. It's the, it's supposed to be 297210. And this is 287509, which I'm not even sure what that's for. So I'm going to have to call them and get that straightened out. But the good news is, is that I have the right crank seal. So you can see here, that's the right one. It's funny because I just took this out of the package and it's like dusty. I don't know. So I don't know what the heck's going on. I want to call them tomorrow and get that sorted out. That's for sure. All right. So let's go ahead and put this one on now. Same method. We'll just fill these up. Fill these lips up with grease. No, that's a lot better. It's feeling like it's going to slip right in. That's what I'm talking about. Now we'll line all these back up. So we got to make sure that these are, like I said, opposite of each other, which this one's not facing the right way. All right. So we got one up, one down. We're going to line up our bearings here. Okay, so you can see here, see how it's locked? This one's locked. Oh, just fell in. Something's not adding up right here. 
Oh, son of a gun. All right, so I just had to flip that bearing around real quick. Now we got everything locked into place. All the bearings are sitting where they should be. Now we're gonna incorporate this other side. I'm gonna make sure that we get ample amount of oil on this thing. All right, now we're gonna go around and just make sure there's no grease on any of this, these mating surfaces here. Gonna use a freshie and then some good old carbon chill cleaner to clean off any sort of oil. Although we're looking pretty good already, so should be fine. But any residue, and then you can see there's a little bit on there. So the next step is to prep the lower half of the case. All right, so we got the bottom half of the case over here. We're gonna go ahead and wipe down all the mating surface here as well. All right, we got oil on our pump shaft here. So what we're gonna do is, hopefully I got enough of this stuff in here. This is the right stuff, one minute gasket maker. Just put a real thin amount all the way around and then we're gonna tap it. I'm gonna make sure you do it with those clean gloves as well. And uh, we're gonna tap it and that'll help it to create a nice even seal. Oh, we had plenty. Like I said, it don't take a lot. I've even heard some people say that you don't even need this stuff on here. But that don't make much sense. I mean, I kind of wasted this stuff. All right, I think I might actually do this with a glove off just to get a little bit more accuracy. Just wanna go around and tap it like this, get it to where it kinda gets little pokey spots all over it. It's gonna wipe all the interior portions out. All right, so we're just about ready. All right, looking good. All right, so what we'll do is we'll bring the crank, the upper half of the crankcase over, and then we'll take this and flip it up side down and put it on top of that. And then we'll put it on top of the other half of the crank. Now, if you run into a problem where it doesn't want to push all the way down, just uh, spin the impeller a little bit. like that I got my bolts all set up in my cardboard that way I know what goes where three four five six seven eight nine ten then we got the outers then I just zing them in First up, we're gonna do in 10. Next step is 20. Then 
And then the last step is 30. All right, that is it. I don't know why, but that's always a little bit of a stressful scenario for me. Last thing you wanna do is bust off a bolt right as you're putting things together. All right, so next up is the end plate. And there are four bolts here. These are the six down by one bolts and they get blue Loctite and then torqued to about six foot pounds. All right, next up is the stator, and we're gonna need a five millimeter socket head and then some blue Loctite again. All right, now with this stator and some other staters, you wanna make sure that when you put it back and you line up the timing marks, which when you pulled it off, you should have either noted where it was. Um, a lot of the times you'll see where the edge of the flange was from the bolt, um, but just note where the marker is on the case. And then I'll usually just take a little anything to scratch it and I'll scratch a straight line there. Once you get it lined up, just go ahead and pop that screw in there. All right, so once you get the stator in there, you can go ahead and put your plug back in. I went ahead, cleaned mine up. I kind of like them clean. There, I haven't cleaned the wires up too, so not perfect, but you know, I kind of like it. It's part, may as well wipe it down. All right. Next, we're gonna put the water pump impeller cover on. So you wanna make sure that you have your, your gasket, and then you just wanna place a little bit of sealant over these two seams right here. That's what the manual calls for. The manual does not say to cover the whole thing. You always want to make sure these pins are nice and clean. <laughs> all right, so pretty much all that one's okay, but all the rest of these were that one's, I guess, okay. But these two flathead screws were trashed. So I just went out and got a full set from Maynard's. I've used these before. I did this on my ZR, my 96 ZR. They held up really well. I do have, I did place an order with an online fastener shop and I got some stainless steel versions of these coming. So, but you'll need a, these are all hex head, make it easier. These are all uh, four millimeter. And then once again, we'll take our blue Loctite. They all, these all get torqued to about five or six foot pounds as well. And if you guys wanted to order these up yourselves, these are 20 millimeter. They're, they're M6 by 1.0 1, 1 threads. And then from the bottom of this flange to the end of the threads is 20 millimeters. And then with these flathead ones, you'll measure from the flat of the head to the end of the threads. And those are 20 millimeters as well. And yeah, these are all black oxide. I know, it doesn't hold up the best. I mean, longevity wise, they're good for low humidity.
you don't have to torque these in a crisscross pattern. It's just a habit I got. But yeah, the issue, I don't, I mean, I don't know if they just didn't have the hex heads back then or what. All this fill up stuff's just a horrible mistake, in my opinion. All right, so that's that. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and put the oil injection pump on. This is one that I got from West Michigan Snowmobile off another 550. It's pretty clean, so um, I did hit it, in the, hit it with the uh, soda blaster, so um, yeah, but it, either way, it did clean up really nice. This bolt on the bottom here for the crank case was pretty dirty. I mean, it, this was almost plugged up in here, so which, you know, is not surprising with all the grime that's in there that was in there, so I went and hit that in the soda blaster as well. All right, so this is my newest addition to my nuts and bolts ordeal. I got this thing at Harbor Freight. This might be what I'm looking for, these socket heads right here. Stainless steel, baby. These are what I will use to attach the oil pump. Yeah, so I got uh, all kinds of stuff in here. I got the uh, exhaust. These are the exhaust nuts, which are the M... Oh no, these are the uh, cylinder head nuts. So these are the M10s. I got the exhaust nuts here. These are the M8s. And then I got uh, 50 millimeter and 60 millimeter head bolts. And these are just quarter 20. Uh, I got quarter inch lock nuts. I got the cylinder head washers and lock nuts. Uh, it's quarter, these are quarter 20 flat washers. I got 9 16 inch flat washers. I got little odds and ends like, you know, stud bolts and stuff for the cylinders and uh, the exhaust. And then I got these 9 16 inch flanges. I was using these for these uh, skags. And then uh, just your odds and ends right here. I actually have another one of these that I'm gonna get even more bolts and then separate it to where it's even that much better. Obviously I got a whole box of uh, 9 16 inch lock washer, or I'm sorry, lock nuts. And then these assorted, uh, these are 5 16 inch bolts. These go in the skid. These are all over the place. Well, they're in a couple spots in the skid. Mainly they are in the, the braces that go across, uh, the two in the front, and then sometimes there's one in the back. And then uh, same thing with these. These are braces. These are also for the swing arm brackets. And then obviously you'll use a 9 16 inch on those. We got stuff for all kinds of different stuff. So these are for the spindles. We got just different assortment of stuff. More uh, spindle stuff. Um, skid skid uh, bolts. Just got those. I ran out of those. 5 16 lock washers there so yeah I have another one of these that I'm gonna fill up as well who knows I may even fill up a third <laughs> and then I got some smaller ones like this that I'm gonna start using for the dirt bike parts so or not dirt bike parts but dirt bike fasteners so yeah I just figured I'd show you guys that real quick nice little storage unit because I, I don't know, I thought about getting all the, the shelves with the, the boxes and they pull the boxes out, but that stuff all gets dusty. I do powder coating, blah, blah, blah. All right, I got some lock washers and regular washers for the new nuts. New lock washers and washers for the new bolts. Just about ready to put this pump on here. Just going to go ahead and clean all these surfaces off. Make sure there's no oil on them. Don't forget to put your machine bushing on the shaft. Just put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. A little bit of extra insurance never hurt. And these get torqued as well. It's gonna go four foot pounds on these. Just clean these up. Then we're gonna put this bottom hose on. We're gonna replace that. These are eight millimeter. 
Eight millimeters, also five sixteenths. While this is off, I'm gonna go ahead and blow these lines out real quick just to make sure. Good thing I did. You wanna make sure that there's no grime or grit on these compression washers here. Those are sealing surfaces. Gonna get these both on here before I tighten either one of these up. And you'll notice that there's a flat side and then there's a side that's got a little lip on the inside. And that's the side that goes against the brass fitting there. I believe these have a torque setting, but I just snug them up. Once it kind of stops turning, just give it a little bit of a tweak. And you're good. Never had a problem doing that. All right, we are looking good, people. Good to go. Everything is rock solid. Thanks once again to West Michigan Snowmobile Parts. Keith and Eric Loudermilk, you guys rock. Thanks specifically, Eric, for hunting this one down in their shop and sending this one off to me. So, thumbs up, buddy. Appreciate it. God bless you. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and put the motor mounts on. So, we just have a few here. These are all half inch. And yes, these do get blue Loctite, if you're wondering. And we have another one on this side. These are supposed to be torqued down to 24 foot-pounds. All right, that's this side. And we got a couple of big guys here. These are eight millimeter. And these I like to just get started just to make sure that they both line up. Give you a little bit better shot here. I'm just about out of my blue Loctite. I believe these are about 30 pounds, 32 maybe, put it at 35. Alright guys, that is it for the day. Got the bottom end complete except for the flywheel recoil housing. Not a big deal. We're going to put that on after we get the cylinders on. Come on back next week and we're going to go ahead and put the cylinders and pistons and heads on. And then after that we're going to be putting it in the sled for the first startup. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back and see what we got going on. Don't forget to smash the like button. Check us out on Instagram. Check us out on TikTok. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So take care. Come on back. God bless.